So you finally made the decision, and in just a few short weeks, you'll be bringing home a new puppy. Puppies are bundles of joy, most of the time, but they can also bring a lot of stress and schedule changes. Fortunately, there's a lot you can do ahead of time to prepare your home, yourself, and your current resident dogs to make the addition of another dog go a little bit more smoothly. The first thing we always want to prepare is our own mindset and expectations. Dogs are a lot of work. Multi-dog households are even more work. And no matter how much we do right, there's always a chance that dogs in a multi-dog household may not get along as best friends. This is even more likely if your resident dog has not been overly social throughout their life. As owners, we need to prepare for all possibilities. So it's always a good idea to check in with ourselves and make sure that we're adding a new dog for the right reasons, for us and not because we think it might change an existing dog, and that we're prepared for all the possibilities. This new puppy will be our responsibility and not the responsibility of our kids or other resident dogs. We need to be committed to putting in the work to help it all go right. For example, we'll need to be in charge of training and exercise. And while it's fun to get kids involved, it's not their responsibility. And we can't rely on the resident dogs to tire the puppy out. If things don't go as planned, we'll need to keep working with our new dog and our resident dogs to make sure that it goes well. In addition to evaluating why we really want this puppy and whose responsibility it will be, we want to try to prepare for puppy antics. Puppies are a lot of work, and it can mean a few exhausting weeks of little sleep and little time for ourselves. Be prepared for accidents and nipping. It isn't personal, it's just part of learning. But putting in the work now will really set a strong foundation to help you get that well-mannered adult dog and a peaceful multi-dog household. Not all of the challenges that we will be encountering as the family grows will be related to the new puppy. Our resident dogs will also be undergoing some big changes and their behavior can have a big impact on the puppy's behavior and our own stress levels. This is why it's always a good idea to spend some time before the puppy arrives working with the resident dogs to sharpen up their training skills. A general skill refresh is a great idea because you're gonna be busy when the puppy arrives and you'll have less time and energy to work with the resident dogs. Before the puppy comes, you should work on general life skills with your resident dogs, such as staying quiet in the house. We wanna reward the resident dog for calm and quiet behavior throughout the day. We don't want the new puppy learning how to bark. You might even consider putting in some time to reduce barking to sounds like the doorbell or knocking to help the new puppy learn the right kinds of manners. Relaxation. Remember that more dogs mean more energy, and we want to make sure that that resident dog is making it easy for that new puppy to remain calm. Practicing skills like settle on a mat and rewarding calm and quiet behavior throughout the day will help your resident dog pick up on this. Leash manners. Remember that when walking two dogs at once, it gets significantly more challenging. We wanna make sure that we're fine tuning those loose leash walking skills and teaching your dog how to pay attention with distractions. Remember that our energy is gonna be focused on that puppy once he or she arrives. So having that resident dog leash manners at top level will be key. Impulse control. Polite greetings, no counter surfing, and waiting at the door are all really good things to practice. Remember that energy levels will feed off one another, so we wanna make sure that that resident dog is setting a good example of patience and focus. There are also a few specific themes that will make life in multi-dog households much easier, such as learning, acceptance, and comfort with management, and station training. When the puppy comes home, you should have lots of management during play in order to keep everybody safe for no inappropriate chewing or fights. We wanna prevent unwanted behavior like jumping on counters and dumpster diving. And we wanna make sure that we're developing positive relationships between the dogs. In the beginning, the resident dogs should be separated with crates, X-pens, or baby gates from the puppy at all times. It's important that they learn how to be comfortable with this separation process before the puppy comes home in order to avoid additional stress and the potential negative association with the puppy. 
Organize your management early to allow yourself time to train and allow your dogs to get comfortable with it. You can use breakfast and dinner to play games with the crates, such as working on in and outs, then advancing to relaxation inside the crate with the door open, then closed, and finally moving on to relaxation in the crate with distractions for longer periods of time. We want to make sure that you can move around the space and be active in the space while the resident dogs remain quiet and calm on the other side of the crate door or baby gate. By using management like baby gates, you can work on rewarding your dog for remaining quiet and calm and having four feet on the floor while they're separated from you at the threshold. Settle on a mat and go to place are also very helpful behaviors for the resident dogs to know. Adding dogs to the household increases the overall energy level and makes it harder for all the dogs to relax. So teaching settle not only gives you the ability to ask for it, but your dog will start to offer it on their own, giving you more chances to reinforce that nice calm behavior. You can even work on skills like place or settle on a mat with a separation like baby gates or X-pens to help your dog prepare for that longer distance relaxation. As I already mentioned, home prep is key. And the sooner you can make those changes to your house and your routine, the less stressful it will be for your resident dogs. A crate for each dog, an X-pen central for the puppy, and baby gates partitioning off parts of the home will all be helpful. However, we always wanna make sure that when it's safe, the resident dogs have the freedom to move around. This was in fact their home to start with. And if you introduce too much control and too many changes right away, your dog can actually make those negative associations with the new four-footed arrival. Your new puppy can have free time in the exercise pen when they will be safe and confined, while the resident dogs can approach and retreat as desired, Confinement will also help prevent your puppy from being too obnoxious and biting and jumping on the resident dogs, which might not appreciate it. During the first few weeks home with your puppy, it's important that your resident dogs still continue to get exercise, attention, and enrichment. Splitting up duties in households with multiple adults can be very helpful. One adult could do some puppy training while the other heads out for some stretching and sniffing with the adult dogs. If you're a sole caregiver, plan on some additional activity and special outings for the resident dogs while the puppy naps or works on a food puzzle. You'll also find it helpful to stock up on activities. Chews like bully sticks, tracheas, raw bones, and no hide chews can be given daily for energy reduction and stress relief. Food puzzles like Kong wobblers, bobolots, and snuffle mats can be used to work the brain and body during mealtimes. And of course, pacifiers like Kongs and Topples can be frozen as a meal or snack when you need to promote some downtime and relaxation. Purchasing in bulk and prepping ahead of time can make it easier for you to give in a hurry. Multi-dog households provide an array of new challenges, but preparing for those early with management and relationship building is key. Some dogs who are more sensitive or more reactive might need more time and space to adjust, and it's recommended to have a double barrier system, like a puppy and an X-Pen in the front room and the resident dog behind a baby gate in the kitchen. Blankets can be used to provide visual blocking to help reduce some of the stimulation as well to make it easier for the resident dog to be relaxed as they adjust to all the new smells and sounds. As arousal and stress decrease, make sure you're proficient at reading dog body language, you can reduce some of those visual blocks to partial blocks. And later on, you can allow full vision and even begin to open those baby gates and X-pens under direct supervision for short periods of time. During this slow introduction, reinforcement and time are key. We wanna make sure that we allow the dogs enough time that they can slowly get used to each other and that initial excitement has died down. We also wanna make sure that we're reinforcing desired behaviors from all involved. A few things that I start to look for are quiet and four on the floor, as the dogs are on opposite sides of a baby gate. I like to reward patience, like waiting at the baby gate as I move through it from the older dog. I might reward quiet and calm behavior while the puppy is active, so rewarding that older dog for ignoring the rambunctious puppy. 
I might also play a one for you, one for me game where the dogs are on opposite sides of the baby gate and I reward them alternating from puppy to adult dog. You can say the dog's name and then give them a treat. Repeat this process going around, offering a turn for each dog. You can also do group settle on a mat practice, reinforcing the dogs for laying down on their beds on opposite sides or even the same side of the baby gate. When all the dogs are getting along and stress levels are lower, you can ease up on some of those management restrictions. Be careful to not remove all the management too soon, as this could be a recipe for disaster and can lead to your puppy becoming a pest to your older dog. Training setbacks like that can be like emptying a piggy bank prematurely and will lead to you needing to fill it back up slowly over time with coins, aka positive associations and training sessions. Eventually, as you start to allow more interaction between the dogs, there are a few behaviors that will help you manage everyone calmly. Attention on cue and positive interrupters are wonderful ways for you to be able to get focused from your puppy or adult dogs. Once you have attention, you can do a treat scatter, a recall, or even ask the adults for something like settle to help redirect unwanted interactions. Hand targets are also great tools and can be used to help redirect behavior as well. Once a target is taught, puppies quickly learn how to follow a hand target, making it easier to guide a puppy out of trouble. Ultimately, multi-dog households can be a ton of fun. And with a little preparation ahead of time for you and your adult dog, you guys can be off to a great start with building those positive relationships with one another. So be sure to sharpen up those training skills for your adult dog. Make sure that you really think about setting your home up for success, not only for your puppy, but also your adult. Don't forget about enrichment and make sure that you make those introductions nice and slow so you can build those positive relationships. Need more help with your new puppy? I think you'll like this playlist here, focusing on all of those puppy problems.